This video is a short video on brood parasites of Southern Africa. It describes the 25 species known to be brood parasites, what their strategies are, what the benefits are of brood parasitism, and what families they belong to. So what is brood parasitism? It may be loosely defined as the phenomenon or behavior displayed by individual species of certain families of birds where a gravid female lays her eggs in the nest of an unrelated host species of bird. The host bird pair mistakenly broods the egg and raises the chick until it fledges or leaves the nest. More succinctly, it is where one species relies on another species to raise its young. So what are the strategies of brood parasitism? The host birds are fooled into raising the chicks by a series of strategies. The adult male brood parasite distracts the female or pair of birds of their host nest allowing the female brood parasite to sneak into that nest and quickly lay her own egg or eggs. Eggs are laid by the brood parasite that resemble or mimic the host eggs in size, color, shape and pattern. One or several eggs may be laid or individual eggs may be laid in several different nests. Here's an example of a host nest with the host brood and the parasitic cuckoo egg in, in the nest. So, strategies for brood parasitism. Brood parasite chicks have the instinctive habit of evicting the eggs or chicks of host birds from the nest. Some may have modifications, such as a hollowed back to facilitate this process of egg eviction. Faster hatching and quicker development allows the parasite chick to outgrow its host chicks, thereby allowing it to peck, trample or evict the host chick, or to simply outcompete it for feed when fed by the adult host pair. Chicks may have a mouth or gape colours with black markings that resemble those of the host chicks. This is common in wide-eyes and indigo birds of the family Viduidae. Here's an example of a reed warbler, Eurasian reed warbler, which is feeding a grotesquely large parasitic chick. Um, this is a common cougar chick. So what are the benefits of brood parasitism? Much energy is expended in the raising of chicks and many migratory birds may arrive too exhausted and spent or too late in the season to construct their own nests and successfully raise their own chicks. By using a host to raise the eggs, they can put all the energy into developing their eggs through gestation before laying them. They can also lay multiple eggs in multiple nests to ensure that at least some of their brood are successfully raised each season. So what are the three families that um, have brood parasites? In Southern Africa, the families are Indigatoridae, which is the honey guides and honey birds, Cuculidae, the old world cuckoos, and Viduidae, the wide oz indigo birds and cuckoo finches. Note that in the family Cuculidae, uh, sometimes they place uh, the kukals in that family. It's now in a different family called Centropidae, but sometimes they place kukals in this family. Kukals are not parasitic. So the first example is the Greater Honey Guide, Indicator Indicator. It has a multitude of hosts or possible hosts, including woodpeckers, such as the golden-tailed woodpecker, barbets, the black-collared barbet and crested barbet, scimitar bills, hoopoos and wood hoopoos, all in the same family, Upupidae, well, uh, sorry, the same um, order. Um, and those individual species obviously are, are represented there that there are hosts for this bird. Kingfishers, the similar brown hooded and striped kingfishers, uh, bee eaters, the swallowtail bee eater, the little bee eater, which is quite a common bee eater, the southern carmine bee eater, and the white fronted bee eater, also common, fairly common birds. Starlings, the pied starling and the Cape Glossy starling. Martins, the banded martin, and among the swallows, only the greatest striped swallow is a host of this bird. Among the tits, the southern black tit and the ashy tit only are um, hosts of this bird. Then the anteating chat, and finally the yellow-throated petronia, which is one of the um, house uh, sparrows, or well, sparrow species. So that's the greater honey guard. The lesser honey guard, indicator minor, has fewer hosts. Um, they include uh, two more species of barbet than the previous bird. The black-collared barbet, the crested barbet, which are 
very common barbet species, and then the acacia pied barbet, typical bush felt species, and the white haired barbet, which is rarer. Among the woodpeckers, once again, like the greater honey guide, the golden tailed woodpecker, and then the addition of the olive woodpecker. Uh, among the bee eaters, only the little bee eater is the host for the lesser honey guide, and the petronia is, uh, the yellow throated petronia is a host as well, like the greater honey guide. And then added to this is the red throated wryneck, um, which is one of the hosts. With the scaly throated honey guides, indicator vertigatus, uh, you have once again the golden tailed and olive woodpeckers, uh, hosts of the previous bird, and then the nicer woodpecker and cardinal woodpecker added. Cardinal is one of the smallest woodpeckers we have. Barbets, um, you have the black collared barbets and the white barbet, um, and then of course you have the related tinker birds, uh, the yellow rump tinker bird, which is a relative of the of the barbets. The pallid honey guard, indicator mellifluous, has um, all members of the barbet family basically that are hosts. The white haired barbet and the yellow rump tinker bird. Among the brood parasites for the brown backed honey bird, Prototiscus regulus, we have a number of cysticulars, wailing, rattling, lazy, the valence, tinkling, and cysticulars, and the nediki, which is also a cysticular species, the grey backed Cameroptera, and uh, the prinias. The prinias are similar in size to the cysticulars and similar in habit. So the Karoo Prinia, the Black Chested Prinia, and the Tawny Flank Prinia. The Green Backed Honey Guide has completely different hosts. Um, it's kind of contrary to one, what one would expect for a bird that's related to the uh, Brown Backed Honey Bird. And the reason being that um, they have a different, a very, very different distribution. And some of the host species may not be found where the one bird is and um, it might prefer certain conditions over others. So um, the African yellow white eyes, which are quite common and ubiquitous, form a host species, the African paradise flycatcher, and the amethyst sunbird. Note that all of these nests are very, very small. The birds would have very small nests. Among the cuckoos, um, we have the Jacobin's cuckoo, uh, Clemata or Oxylophus jacobinus, um, we have a number of species with this bird, very, very uh, prolific in terms of the host species it has. All the bulbuls, red-eyed, dark-capped and cape bulbuls that are found in southern Africa are hosts, as is the somber green bull and the terrestrial brown bull. Um, those birds are uh, very common bushfowl birds. Um, chagras, also uh, related to the, the bulbuls, um, southern chagra is a host. Among the shrikes, the common fiscal, um, or formerly called the fiscal shrike, the fork-tailed drongo, uh, two flycatcher species, the African paradise flatcher, flycatcher and the fiscal flycatcher. Don't confuse that with the common fiscal. The fiscal flycatcher, Sigelis simens, is a different species altogether um, from the common fiscal. Um, then, related to the fiscal shrikes, are the booboos, the southern booboo, and um, then you have the mouse birds, uh, such as the speckled mouse bird, Cape White Eyes, Chestnut Vented Tip Babbler, which is a rarer bird to see, although in certain areas it might be more common. It's a, it's a lovely little bird. Um, the Cape Wagtail, which is related, related once again to pipits and um, long claws. Among the bush shrikes, it's the Bok Makiri is a host, and then the golden-breasted bunting. Uh, I think it's a family fringillidae, which is another host for the Jacobin's cuckoo. The valence or striped cuckoo focuses exclusively on the babblers. So the Aramark babbler, Southern Pied babbler, Hartlaub's babbler, and Bear Cheek babbler. For the great spotted cuckoo, Clemata glandarius, we have uh, two main groups of host birds, the crows, the pied crow and the cape crow, and then a range of starlings, uh, predominantly the glossy starlings. Um, so we have the pied starling, 
the red winged and pale winged starlings, which have um, red and sort of pale red colors on the ends of the wings, Cape Glossy Starling, Great Blue Eared Starling, Meaves or Long Tailed Starling, as it was once called, Virtual Starling, and Common Starling. The Thick Billed Cuckoo uh, includes all the helmet shrikes, so it, ho it hosts all the helmet shrikes. Um, the chestnut fronted, white crested, and Retz's helm shrike. So, if those birds are present, they're likely to be preyed on by or parasitized by the thick billed cuckoo. With the registered cuckoo, there are a number of hosts. Um, this is well known for this bird is well known for its call, pit may throw, um, and the hosts include uh, members of the robin family. Robin chats, the Cape Robin chat, white throated Robin chat, red capped or Natal Robin chat, Chorister Robin chat, and white browed Robin chat. Um, the scrub robins, including the white browed scrub robin, bearded scrub robin, and the white starred robin. The stone chat, um, which is a, a typical grassland bird, the African stone chat. Wagtails, the Cape wagtail again, rock thrushes, um, such as the Cape rock thrush. The two curry chain and olive thrushes, which are very, very similar in appearance, but different distributions. And the African dusky flycatcher. And finally, the boulder chat. With the black cuckoo, um, all of its host species are from the genus Laniarius, which is the booboos, the southern booboo and tropical booboo. And um, Laniarius coccineus, the crimson-breasted shrike. With the African cuckoo, um, we have a single host, and that is the fork-tailed rongo. The African cuckoo, incidentally, reminds me, in terms of its call at least, of the hoopoe. It's kind of quite similar. Klaus's cuckoo, um, once again, a number of hosts. You'll notice that they're all relatively small birds that are going to have very small nests. So all the battises, which have tiny little cup-like nests, the chin spot batters, cape batters, and prairie batters. Um, a plethora of sunbirds. There are 21 species of sunbirds, but um, here we have a few of them. The scarlet chested sunbird, grey sunbird, amethyst sunbird, formerly black sun, sunbird, the collared sunbird, Marico sunbird, malachite sunbird, dusky sunbird, and white bellied sunbird. Um, the yellow, among the arum erimomellas, the yellow bellied arum erimomella. Um, the long-billed crumbeck, the African dusky flycatcher, also with a small cup-like nest, the bar-throated Apollos, Apollos thoracica, and the black-throated wattle eye. So these are all um, hosts of the classes cuckoo, and notable by having really small um, cup-shaped, well, mostly cup-shaped shaped nests. Some birds will have um, a a more regular nest with an opening in the front. Um, it's kind of more of a shelter. Brood parasites, the African emerald cuckoo. Um, it has the greenback camaroptera as the host, the ashy flycatcher, white starred robin, yellow throated woodland warbler, and the black throated wattle arm. Among the Hosts for the Diedrich's cuckoo is once again a whole plethora of birds, the southern red bishop, and also from the same family, Plosidae, we have the weavers, uh, southern mast weaver, lesser mast weaver, red-headed, cape weaver, yellow weaver, golden weaver, village weaver, and spectacle weaver. Cape wagtail is a host, the chestnut ventative battler, golden breasted bunting, uh, the Karoo Prinia, various scrub robins, including the white browed Karoo and Kalahari scrub robin, sparrows, um, the southern grey headed sparrow, cave sparrow, and great sparrow, cysticulars, the rattling cysticular only, the mountain wheat ear, flycatchers such as the African paradise flycatcher and the Marico flycatcher, and the white winged widow bird. Among the wide um, the pintailed wide has uh, 
wax bulls as three wax bull species as hosts: the common wax bull, the swee wax bull, and the orange-breasted wax bull. <clears throat> the cysticular species, or called the nediki, is a host, as is the tawny flank prinia, the tiny bronze mannequin, and the red-billed fire finch. The shaft-tailed wide eye has also three wax bull species, but different from the pintail white eye. And those are the violet eared wax bull, the blue wax bull, which is a fairly common wax bull species, and the black faced wax bull, which is rare to see in certain areas. The broad tailed paradise white eye uh, has a single species, the orange winged pytilia, whereas the long tailed paradise white eye has green winged pytilias as the host species. So you can be pretty sure that if the one bird occurs in an area, for example, the orange winged pytilia, its host the broad, is going to be the broad tailed paradise white eye that's going to be around. Um, whereas if the, only the green winged pytilia occurs, you're going to find the long tailed paradise white eye. And then, of course, a single wax bull species, the violet eared wax dusky versus African fire finch, to help remember it. Um, Jamison's fire finch is the host for the purple indigo bird and I remember it as PJ and that refers to pajamas and it's one way to remember it. In the twin spot indigo bird has um, the red throated twin spot as a host hence the name twin spot indigo bird and occasionally the African fire finch. And then finally um, the cuckoo finch also from the family of the duodi has is a is a Pretty much a specialist on cysticular species and prinias and my cat's meowing in the background so um cysticulars including the rattling desert red-faced singing levalence pale crowned cloud zitting croaking rufous wing cysticular wing snapping cysticular and the nediki which is also a cysticular species and then the prinias black chested and tawny flank prinia and that's it. Thank you for watching. Um, these are all the images are obviously from Wikipedia and I've accredited them where necessary. Um, and the lists of brood, brood parasites are based on a list compiled by Trevor Carnaby in his excellent book, Beat About the Bush Birds. If you'd like some of the content, please comment on the video and like and subscribe to the Wilderness Chain channel. Thank you.